Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode where we are talking about balance changes in Frostborn. This is actually not just my idea. The devs asked us, or they asked me, um, to that as a Frostborn community, and I'm gonna basically facilitate the Frostborn community into giving them opinions on balance changes for the game, which is exciting because it might mean that there are, you know, they want the game to be balanced and therefore more fun in PvP. A little confusing because it seems like they gave up on making this a PvP game and they were just making it all about co-op challenge. So I'm not exactly sure what they're doing, but I have made, uh, this is my fourth video. The first video I talk about how I'm confused and I create this formula and I say, hey, this is what y'all are focusing on but this is what you should be focusing on. Fantastic video, you should go check it out. Um, but after that, we talked about weapons and items that need to be balanced. And then we talked about all of the classes which need to be balanced. And honestly, I didn't have as much on the classes that needed to be uh, balanced as we normally did. I mean, the last balance update was pretty good. They did a good job of, at least relatively speaking, it was so unbalanced and it became so much better. Um, but then I realized, wait, what really needs to be balanced is these runes. And so let's talk about these runes. Let's start out and talk about the, um, the ones that are powerful. So the first one is the health rune plus maximum 1% health. You can get up to plus 3% health, which means you can get up to, with 25 spots, you can get up to 25 uh, or 75 percent more health this allows the druid to get up to 800 health um, it is a very powerful rune um, and so that's one of the powerful runes another powerful rune is the damage to monsters which can be combined um, to get up to uh, 1.5 percent damage um, and so with 25 you can get up to 40 percent extra damage and then there's a damage to players which even in all these runes it's the one rune that i wanted for the assassin um i never got one so um that sucks i was really wanting that but those are the three that are kind of the standard those are all the good ones everything else is subpar um below that so let's talk about them a little bit the first one we got is the enraged rune and um and so devs my suggestion on on balancing the enraged rune um, to make it worth possibly getting um, is if you have less than 20% health um, you get that extra damage and it's more than damage to players or damage to monsters um, actually someone made a really good suggestion on this um, you may not actually need to buff this one uh, someone made a suggestion that um, someone could keep these runes and then be the fire mage and go into Odin's with 20% health and just clear the whole thing and just never get hit. And, um, and so the problem with buffing this is that you can allow, um, basically this is just gonna be a PVE rune. Um, but one thing you could do is you could make it to where um, it's 1% for PVE and then do what you did for the sorcerers and make it for the sorcerer and make it like 5% uh, if less than 20% health um, for players. Okay, maybe 5% is too much, but let's say for it, max rune is 4%. Okay, so it's a lot, right? It's like three times as much as uh, this will be. Um, but they have to have their health less than 20%. And so no one's going to be over there like, yeah, I'm just going to keep my health lower than 20%. But it would be kind of fun if you're like, you know, you're doing PvP and you know you have those runes. So it's like an even fight. And then all of a sudden y'all both get down pretty low health and you're like, boom, I'm doing like, you know, double damage to you. And you're like, what just happened? That would make that rune have a purpose in PvP and not just PvE, but you would want to, you would want to make it to where um, they couldn't abuse it in PvE. So maybe do what you did with the sorcerer, where it, it has a filter on there. Um, this one is a damage absorption rune. That here's the problem with this one: you got a 1.5% chance to absorb 
10% of incoming damage if health is less than 40%. You have too many percentages on there. They are all dividing each other's efficacy, which is making this rune just not that good. So um, if you're gonna make it, um, you could, I mean, honestly, you could just take out the 1.5% chance. I mean, absorbing 10% of incoming damage if they, if you have less than health. Well, okay, I guess if you're adding a ton of runes, yeah, that's too much. Oh, no, actually it's not too much because um, you're, it's not stacking how much incoming damage. It's just the percentage chance. So I would say um, if you, if you made it to where it's going to be a hundred, if they have 25 of them, it's going to be a hundred percent chance, then guys absorbing 10% of damage is not that great compared to dealing 40% extra damage or having 75% more health. They're never going to choose this one over those other runes. So if you're going to balance this one, I would say, um, I would just increase it all over. I would increase, I'd make it to where if you had a full page, it'd be a hundred percent chance, or I would just get rid of the chance thing. Just make it a thing and then be like, okay, you, you absorb, you absorb 1% of incoming damage. If it's less than 40%. And then if you have 25 of them, you would be absorbing, um, 25% of damage. That's still not that crazy it because your health is also lower than 40%. Um, I might even buff it more. Does y'all get the point? If you have too many fractions and they're all dividing each other's efficacy, you're going to end up making a worthless rune. So you got to keep that in mind. And then we've got, you know, this rune, which we've already talked about. Um, I would say that's the staple, right? If that's where you want. Now you could nerf the health and damage down. If you don't want runes to be this effective, then you can nerf those, um, Okay, then we've got um, Ignore Armor Rune. This is a, a sweet rune, um, but it's just, if I'm ignoring 1%, I have a one, with 1% 1 chance, ignores 15% of armor. Um, and then I've got five of those right now. So right now I've got, I can, for 5% chance of ignoring armor, well, that's never gonna measure up to damage to players. So I could sit here and calculate for you guys what those numbers should be, but really what it boils down to with this one, if you wanna balance these runes, is you need to say, hey, um, if this is an ignore armor rune, and that's the point, that's really that's for PVP, right? Because there's, no, there's not a lot of in PVE enemies with armor. Um, so you've got, you know, I wanna ignore armor, so this is a PVP skill, then what you need to do is you need to say, okay, what is the medium average of armor? And let's say it's 80. And say, okay, uh, we wanna tweak this rune to where if they have over 80 armor, that this rune is gonna be better than the damage to player rune. And if they have less than 80% armor, then the damage of player rune is going to be better than the ignore enemy armor okay that would be one way of balancing it to where this has a purpose and this has a purpose right now there is no purpose for the ignore armor rune because the damage to players is so much better um it's just it's better and it's weird that the damage to like enemies and and health are green common gems whereas this one this rare one is worth is worth less it's worth not it's not as good all right and then we get the lifesteal rune uh this one's great um i i just think you need to buff it a little bit um you, you need to be careful not to buff this one too much because it can lifesteal can is one of those things in pvp things that players can manipulate so easily i mean i remember this one time i was in adc in League of Legends, um, and I had so much life steal and so much damage that I, I, I often just took on the entire team. You know, like I would just, you know, they would be coming at me. I mean, I was in a low elo at the time, so it was, 
uh, it was whatever, but I would, you know, this guy would attack me, and I'd, I'd kill him, and by the time I'd finished killing him, I was full health, and, and his team hadn't even arrived yet. And um, as they're showing up, um, I, you know, I was vain, and so I was able to pin one against the wall, and then, you know, roll over here and turn invisible, move to the back, kill the other, you know, damage dealer, and then... Uh, we've got three people left. I think I have one more tank or one more damage dealer killed him. And then by the time they kind of were able to crowd control me, it was two tanks versus me. And they would crowd control me and they'd get my health down to where they were about to kill me. And then I would just, you know, it's like a machine gun crossbow at that point. I was so stacked with the gear and it would be like my health would go down. And then I would start shooting them because they, they, they couldn't keep me stunned forever. And my health would just go poof, pop right back up and they, their health would start melting. And uh, it was a longer fight at that point, but I was able to take on two tanks by myself because I just had so much lifesteal. So you want to be careful not to buff lifesteal too much, um, but I think you can do quite a bit more than you're doing right now. Um, and really what I think it boils down to is I think just remove the chance remove the chance of getting blank because anytime you have a chance of something you are not only adding more variability and luck into the game but you are more importantly you are decreasing the efficacy of whatever item that is so six percent lifesteal um, you know is good is very good six percent lifesteal is amazing but would I rather 40% more damage to players or 6% lifesteal? Um, not that you can actually get 100% chance on this, but even if you moved it up to where it was 100% chance of getting 6% lifesteal, I would still choose 40% extra damage to players. Uh, and so just, you gotta balance it out a little bit more. Be careful with that one though, because it can really get out of hand quickly. Then we got the damage reflect rune. This one, I mean, um, this one is a tricky one because this one, I do think there should be a chance. So here's the thing you have, um, with a fit 1.5% chance reflects 15% of incoming damage every three seconds. You have too many things that are cutting its efficacy. I do think that the reducing it by every three seconds, making it to where it can only happen once every three seconds is really good because that's gonna make it to where it's an extra burst of damage, but um, it's not like, you know, oh man, I just got three in a row. I'm just getting devastated. But it's only 15% of the damage. You know, a damage reflect motion is 100% of damage. Like, my thing on this would be just make it, get rid of the percentage, lower the amount of incoming damage even more, but then make it to where if someone wants to make it to where they've got a hundred percent chance every three seconds, you're still limited by the every three seconds. Um, but there's a hundred percent chance of reflecting, let's say they fill all 25 slots, you know, and it's 30% of their damage or, I mean, that's a lot, but it's one shot every three seconds. I mean, you might even be able to go to like 50% extra damage of reflected damage because it's one every three seconds. It would be a lot though. I don't know. So that's where on this one's a little bit trickier. I kind of like the chance. Maybe you add, maybe you keep it a chance, but you make it a lot more damage than that. You know, like maybe, um, maybe keep it at a less than a 10%. I don't know. This one's a tricky one. I think y'all need to rework this, this rune because it's just too easy to be too, like it's like not powerful not powerful worthless worthless way too powerful um, and so this one's a tricky one I think that making it to where it only happens once every three seconds is good or another option that you could have is that every so often when you're getting hit you have a certain percent chance of triggering thorns or like the, the, the little yellow thorn thing above your head. And that way the player can still see, oh, he's got damage reflect. 
if you're gonna do that, then you need to make it 100% because that's what that symbol means in your game. But you could do that. You can make it to where it's like 100% extra damage. You're shooting someone and then all of a sudden it's like, oh crap, they have, you know, um, they have thorns going on. Oh, I'm dying of hunger. Okay, so that's my opinion on Damage Reflect. I realize that I'm not giving you a very clear thing, but I am saying it is undervalued. It is underpowered. You need to either um, reduce the effectiveness of the Trifecta rune that are way too powerful, or you need to increase all of these other runes. Um, this rune right here, the Damage Rune, I think is somewhat balanced. Uh, I, I like it. It, it. I would maybe make it as... It's like the the cousin of the three there's the three that are great and then this one ironically which is outranks all of them is i think is good in the sense that it is not as powerful as the damage to players or damage to enemies but it allows you to have both so someone who wants to maybe they don't have all the player damage to players or they're or they're just like you know what I'm fine with not doing the maximum damage to players, but I want to be able to do damage to enemies and damage to players equally. Just, just I want to just be better. I don't want to have to think about switching out my runes. Then this has a place. And if you ever end up adding some kind of event where we have to kill enemies and then switch to killing players like at the same moment um, in the same place, then that rune's going to have a perfect place. It's going to be the best rune for that event. And so I would say you don't need to change this one at all. It's not the most, it's not part of the trifecta, but it is, uh, it has a place, which is really, when it comes to balance updates, that's all I think about is does this item or does this class have a place? And if it, the answer is yes, and if it's significant enough, then you're balanced, the, then the game's balanced. And so that's my thought. And then the last rune, we got critical damage. Um, Attacks deal extra damage with a 5% chance. I like this one. I just think it could be quite a bit more. 5% chance reduces it by 1 20th. You don't want to make the critical damage 20 times as much as normal damage, but right now you have it as like, you know, not even double. And maybe double. Let's say it's double but you reduced it by 20, like 1 20th. So maybe make the critical damage um, six times as much. Overall, you're still going to be way lower than the just damage to players, but you're gonna at least make it to where you get that burst of damage that freaks people out. That might make it worth it to some people, but if you don't do at least one third of the extra damage that um, overall, okay? Which means you're gonna have to do like six or seven times as much damage. If you're gonna reduce it to a 5% chance, you're gonna need the damage to be like seven times as much, six to seven times as much as it would be. So if it's plus 40% damage to players, then you're talking about, yeah, that's too much. You gotta, really you gotta reduce the percentage, uh, this is a tricky one because you got to reduce the percentage chance, maybe, or increase it, maybe make it 25% chance. Okay. Now those numbers are looking better. You got a 25% chance, one out of every four shots of doing, um, a little bit more damage so that you could probably keep it the way it is. Just increase the chance by 25%. Um, because you gotta keep in mind, we're gonna be doing so much less damage because we didn't end up taking that rune. So uh, yeah, it's, it's it's just one of those, this is a trick, a lot of these are trickier runes. You have too many multiplications in there. Um, so if you wanted to keep it at 5% chance, well then uh, if you wanted to go six times, that'd be plus 240% damage. That would be insane, right? I mean, that would be like, you're like, boom, boom. And then you just did a hit that did three to four times as much damage in one hit, it would definitely work as far as scaring people, but it would be really disconcerting. It just seems too extreme. So I would maybe, maybe 
go at 25% chance of hitting and then keeping it as it is where it's doing just a little bit more damage. Or, uh, but it still is going to have that variability where it throws people off. Oh, he just did a crazy amount of damage with that hit. Um, which I think is the point of a critical hit rune, a critical damage rune. So, so that's it. Uh, my phone just died. Um, so I'll just go ahead and put this up here. If you guys did not see this video, it was three Frostborn videos ago. Uh, it was a fascinating and I'm still trying to develop this. I would like to develop this into something even more sophisticated um, so that I can show it to devs and, and help devs figure out what, what do I need to be focusing on? Right now, Frostborn is focusing on fun level and I would say they need to be focusing on uh, grind slash what is boring um, because the fun level um, is 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 actually pretty good in Frostborn um, right now. There's not a ton of things that are that are keeping the game from being fun. There are some things like they could work on uh, rating balance, like but I think they've already been working on that quite a bit. And there's um, um, but they and they could maybe maybe make it easier to have more time. But really focusing on these two is going to be, I think, the, the key part. And if I can develop this formula a little bit better on how to make a good game, then I could show this to more devs and more devs could have that. Um, they basically take their staff team or take their community and say, hey, which of these four areas do we need to be working on right now? And if we can really develop that, then we can help a lot of these game companies figure out where do I need to be focusing on right now to really get the best player retention and um, and and in that video, I argue that they need to be focused right here. Really curious in y'all's opinion, and if y'all can help me make a better formula. All right, guys, I'll see you next time.